and hello, welcome back. It's Segway Penguin Gaming once again with a devlog for my liege. And this time, this is a uh, devlog number six. And I gotta say, if you watch devlog number five, you're a trooper because it didn't really have anything that interesting in it. But enough with the techno ch technical changes. Here we are with some actual meaningful feedback improvements. The game you can kind of see in the background already all has uh, gone through a minor facelift. Um, I have more visual changes planned, but I want to get into actually what I've done to kind of update the feedback I got from the from the prototype and highlight a lot of those changes. Not going to go into a lot of like the Unity game objects and stuff. Just going to talk about the game design ideas so far uh, on this one. So probably not going to open Visual Studios. Probably just going to look at the game right now, or for this one. Um, but yeah, before I begin, uh, got my preview nice and big so that we can do a proper cat check. Right now we have Juliet. She's all nested up in her spot on the cat tree. Took her about five minutes to get the blanket right. And then, uh, Jelly Bean. Hey, poke your head up. You can barely see, like, in ear, but he's being a little butt. So, trust me, he still exists. Uh, also got a Bob Ross and a space shirt on. So, overall, got the cat check, cat vibe check out of the way. So, let's make myself appropriate sized. There we go. And, yeah, got a lot of things I want to cover. We're going to cover um, pretty quickly. want to keep this without going completely bizarre over... But, right off the bat, um, I did some visual updates, because uh, I got kind of tired of looking at the same old thing, and there was one thing that was really bothering me personally, is the whole demo is about how it's fall, and there's stuff happening as winter approaches, and it didn't look like fall. So, updated it, so now I have a couple of different tree uh, trees sprinkled in that are you know more leafy more fall like and uh just use the unity tree builder and uh to make these I, you know i made like the blobby leaf shapes outside of unity in a program called blender it's a 3d free free 3d modeling software um but then yeah uh, unity does a great job of kind of helping you build a this like trunk and branch system uh, at a fairly random pattern and then um, when you paint them onto the terrain you can you know vary the sizes and stuff automatically so uh, even though there's technically only four tree models in here four distinct tree models they're all varying shapes and rotations so it's looking pretty good I might add a few more I think for trees, I'm actually probably going to be done. Um, and any additional changes would be like to buildings and stuff. Um, but yeah, so did that. And then also uh, wanted to pump up the field a little bit. The the, the, the farms. So same thing. Uh, these pumpkins are actually trees as well <laughs> in Unity's eyes. Uh, made a tree, a pumpkin plant, and then painted it on. Same thing, just it reorganizes it for me and then this uh wheat is actually um using the unity's grass painter tool on the terrain um so i defined like what a single wheat looks like and then it helps vary it and then if i helped if i i think i'd have to add some more things but i could have it like sway in the wind too uh, i haven't really looked into that um, gets into like armatures, I believe, and stuff, and I am learning as I go. So, um, but yeah, so those are kind of some big visual changes I actually added in um, to the actual game world. Now, let's talk about gameplay because that's where the feedback really lay. And there were three main things that we're gonna look at. I wanted to improve the visibility of your choices. I wanted to make the dialogue. Uh, a little more clear about what your your choices were going to do and then um, also 
give you something more to do in the world when you're not navigating the menus. Um, so those first two I'm going to talk about first. Um, I intentionally am still going to try to leave some things vague. Because as a leader of a medieval style town, you're not going to have perfect information. Even here, you can see I've kind of... I, I I think I'm going to probably take honor and martial ability off and just only show stats or like job assignments of like concrete things you as a leader would know. And then maybe I still want you to know whether you're strong or weak or, or honorable or not. So I might replace those with like some decoded words so that good, fair, struggling, um, but less, you know, more more reasonable. It's not a quant. It's only a quantity in the game because I need numbers to on the back end to do my logic with. Um, and so when I approached the the game, and so let's go ahead. Oh, right there! I had a perfect example of, of what I did for for moving the week. You'll see I have a, a timeline now at the bottom that's actually scrolling along and, and telling you what day you're on to help emphasize that time is actually passing when you move to the next week. Um, might do a little bit more there. Right now I'm pretty happy with it as is. Um, overall the whole UI is going to get a nice scrubbing and, and making it more flavorful, more appropriate for the setting and com conformed to each other. Conformed? Make it nice and even. Um, and so, what I wanted to do is on the front end, before you make your choice, I wanted to give you more information, but have it always in my mind that I want it to be relevant of what you could know. Um, so, one thing I added is, um, let's say you read this and you want a little bit more information. That so that may, I won't do this on everyone, but especially on the bigger choices, I'm going to give you the option to ask a question. And wow, this is poorly formatted. Uh, something happened since the last time I was in this menu. <laughs> but hey, this is in progress. So, um, so I'm going to give you kind of the option, like how trustworthy is the shaman? And then if you ask that. Uh, you know, you're gonna get a little bit more information. I'm leaving the space in the middle here open because I think I want to show two meeples talking to each other, like you and then whoever you're asking, and then give the little answer. Um, but this way you have a little bit more uh, agency to 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 get a little bit of a back and forth. But I don't want it to be a dialogue back and forth entirely. So, um, you know, have a little fact finding, great. And then, now you can come back and, and, and say, make your choice. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is, is so, I kind of did this with the advisors, trying to communicate in game, you know, in, you know, a flavorful storytelling way, communicate what this choice would do or impact. But um, I'm playing around right now with these tiny little menus here where, under the option, once you pick it, when you're hovering it or selecting it, kind of previewing what it's going to do in, in game terms. Um, because if you were to make this choice, you would explicitly as the, you know, the, I guess it depends. Some things you would explicitly know as the leader. Ah, uh, yes, when I say some of the house guard help in the fields, you know, you would have some guards that would turn into farmers. I'm trying out these rough icons. Definitely placeholders for the moment. Gonna look into like how to communicate this succinctly and better. Um, and with the goal of you gain more food. Um, but I'm not gonna tell you how many. Um, Cause if you imagine like you tell somebody, oh, you, you know, tell the castle in that some of those guards need to help in the fields. As the leader, you're probably not micromanaging that. You're going to let the castle in the side. So I'm not going to give you full information because you're not micromanaged. I don't want you to be micromanaging everything in this game. Some of it is you make a choice and it's how does the world implement it? How do your people implement that? 
that solution. Um, so, uh, playing around with like some previews, so you're not surprised. Like, okay, some merchants are going to turn into farmers. I'm going to get more food, and I'm actually that should be a down arrow for I'm going to lose gold a turn. Um, obviously, got some bugs to work out still. Uh, so. Between the question and, and previewing that a little bit better, I want you to be a little bit more confident in what you're picking is what you that you know what you're picking is going to do what you're picturing. And then let's say you make this choice. Awesome. Nothing different there. Great. Now I have on the after the choice, I wanted to clearly show here's what changed because of that choice. And uh, um once again, keeping in mind, it should be the concrete things that you could verify if you were in there, you know, if you were the leader, what would you know happened? Um, and this is actually twofold. So I'm communicating better what is the ramifications of your choice, the immediate changes. You're not going to maybe know the trickle downs until many weeks later. Um, but also getting you more engaged with the world because in the game, I had things like this happening where a meeple, you know, went from oh he used to be a guard so he was in like the fort area so that, and then he walked over to the farm that was happening in the demo but no no in the prototype i mean but nobody noticed or very few people noticed so now with the camera focused up a cute little animation of of guards going from one side to the other um one thing i'm gonna definitely clean up here is i want them to switch tools like get midway put their swords down pick up some pitchforks uh, this guy didn't switch his pitchfork until he got to this box, which I'm considering the main barn right now. Um, and so getting you more engaged in all that too. And then other thing is, this is very just in the face straight to the point, but calling out the stat changes. Once again, these stats were changing, uh, but nobody was, very few people were noticing it until weeks later. Um, so you would know your food in, production has increased so you'll see that and you'll and I'm highlighting it over here and then when you close the menu you go away um, great so um, that's what I did around the options now making the world more interesting to interact with and I can see some bugginess of okay there you go he dehighlighted um, people were trying to click on the meeples in the buildings in in the prototype well guess what now you can so let's pick on a meeple awesome you get a little menu now uh am i covering it up no i'm not excellent well i'm covering up a corner but that corner is not important um great so i'm gonna have a nice little menu here and this is this, I've, I've been to roller coaster tycoon before on a dev dialogue I, or dev dialogue devlog this thing before and this is what i was picturing give me their name give me their job uh, give me like a, a thought of theirs and then an ability to like follow them around and around and have like a little camera um, Same thing you can do with the the main buildings or what I'm gonna call headquarters on the back end uh, So this is the big barn just and, and I'm gonna I'm kind of repeating some things that you'll have in the menus up here um more bugginess uh this is yeah one thing is for sure i've been kind of slapping these things together pretty quick to to get a feel for if i like them or not there's a lot of bug fixing and polish that still needs to go into it but you know just kind of echo some things about that job how many people's some food stored and a fun fact they have the world's or the region's largest ear of corn there excellent as well as like the ability to like focus in on that building, which hopefully will be much more interesting when I make into a proper, you know, model for it. Um, so that's how I tackled those two things so far. Uh, might come up with some more ideas, especially at massaging it as I define exactly how it visually looks. Um, but hopefully those things really help bring more flavor to the world here. Um, last thing that I want to show off, and, and this is more literally 
did this stuff today and I'm just excited. It's not completely finished yet, but in order to show it, I'm going to have to pause. And I've got some buttons that are currently hidden for testing purposes, but let's unhide those. Um, so one thing that if you played the prototype you would have ran into is there was a spot where you ended up with some inclement we weather. And so I wanted to make sure that I could bring in some kind of weather effects. Oh, excuse me. Because um, that was going to be important. Especially with winter arriving, I'm going to want some snow falling. So, uh, working on making a weather system. Right now it's not plugged into any of the game, but turn by turn I would have pictured this as kind of like evolving over time. So. Uh, right now, no weather is, is showing. If we switch, though, this is what light rain currently looks like. Uh, maybe you... Oh, it's nice and sunny again. Oh, my goodness. Where did this... Oh, no. Why are you being buggy? Oh, there we go. Now we got some heavy rain. Um, and so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, it took a little bit of work learning about like Unity's particle systems. I had used that on my ski game to make uh, snow come out from behind the skis, but you know this I had to like tinker with about ten different settings that I hadn't used yet before. So um, and there's so much flexibility here. I can make it come down thicker, uh, more wind, stuff like that. I'm probably gonna do more with the lighting. Uh, during like a, a storm to like have maybe some lightning flash. Uh, obviously, the whole game needs audio, so uh, I really want to have the rain feel uh, feel just like you're in there. That's ambitious, uh, but uh, pretty happy with it right now. Uh, it does do some a few goofy things when you move with the camera. Like if you go up with the rain, like it kind of looks like snow briefly. Um, but overall, pretty pleased with how this is happening. And so, what what's left to do with the weather is implement some snow. But then I just gotta plug it in to the events that happen in the game. So like when bad weather uh, event comes up. Maybe make sure that the turns, the first few turns before it, you have some amount of rain. And then when bad weather hits, it's heavy rain. So that story of it's been really wet lately, we're having trouble getting the, the crops in. Um, that's not just, I'm telling you that with words, you're going to be like, yeah, it has been rainy. Um, and then when it's not related to the story, having some kind of random weather generation uh, happen probably all just kind of percent driven if it's a sunny day there's a percent there's a high percent chance of either sunny or cloudy and then you know maybe some rain once it starts raining you know go for so many days i don't know or i could just make it completely random i don't need to have it be meteorologically make sense either <laughs> um but yeah very happy with how this turned out uh the last two days, it's actually really come together. The last two days, I, I added the trees, the, the wheat, the pumpkins, the rain. So visually, I, I felt it was finally time. Let's let's get a devlog put together. And with that, that's everything that I have to show today. Uh, I'm going to just have a couple of comments before we wrap up completely about my future plans with this. Uh, December 31st-ish, still planning on having a alpha demo for release. Uh, I'm calling it an alpha demo because the, the big plan is alpha demo where it's got a lot more of these features from the original feedback and probably the same kind of content, maybe a little bit more content in the, in the story, but um, focusing more on making the game bigger and better. Um, and then... A beta release where sometime a uh, few months after that we're focusing on fleshing out more gameplay and then um, talking sometime in 2024 a full release of the game maybe featuring it on like a steam store or something like that um, I'm actually a little bit ahead of where I thought I'd be so uh, at this point 
So I'm, I, I'm pretty confident where I am. Still got a lot of things to add. Um, the main things being like game essentials, all the menus and stuff. But those I've created on other games. So uh, I have no doubt that that'll be achievable. Um, so kind of November going to be focusing a lot on, on finishing up the things I want to add to the game. Gameplay wise or immersion wise, that kind of thing. Um, and then from there... Uh, just a layer of game essentials like those menus, a layer of polish and bug fixing, and uh, maybe get to some of the parking lot items. I'm trying to keep myself from scope creeping myself, uh, which <laughs> is tricky as both the project manager and lead developer. Uh, I have all these great ideas or, or interesting ideas, and I sometimes at times I don't know maybe you should actually get things put together and keep moving. So. Uh, that's where I am right now. Uh, thank you so much for, for sticking around. And if you um, have any comments, uh, ideas, things that you that you really liked, want to want to see me or have ideas for how it could be a little different, um, hit me up. Not really looking for too much feedback yet because things are still very much in flux. But always hit me up, call me, beat me, how you want to reach me. Um, any engagement is excellent. Uh, trying to also build up a little bit of hype for uh, an end of the year or demo because then you guys will hold me accountable for it. So uh, with that said, I'm going to get out of your hair. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.